morning, good morning around the world. Good morning to everybody that are attending this service. Good morning for all those people that are joining in Facebook and in Zoom. Thank you that you will be blessed when you are listening to the Word of God today. It will be a full blessings of God because the Holy Spirit is already here waiting for us to praise and worship our Lord. You will be blessed from the very beginning until the end because God will steer your faith. He is here. He is with us. Lord, thank you so much for this day. This is the day that you have made for your people. Thank you so much, oh God, that you give us a fruitful life, abundant life, peaceful life. Thank you so much, oh God, that your Holy Spirit is in this place. Thank you so much that you never leave your people. Every time we come to you, you are always there. And thank you so much, oh God, that you always strengthen our spirit and our physical body. Lord, thank you so much. We give you praise and glory, letting the Holy Spirit flow in this place. Thank you so much. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, beautiful morning. Thank you, God, for everybody here. Thank you for everyone tuning in online, on Zoom, on Facebook, even on YouTube, Lord. Bless them where they are. Fill their room, fill their space, fill their cars, wherever they're coming from. Fill it with your presence right now, God. Touch our heart again this morning. Lord, I know that there's some people who just need that extra touch from you. Who just need that extra knowing that you're there today. Who need that extra dose of peace and joy. Amen. Thank you, God, that you're always enough and you provide everything that we need. Everything that we need, Lord. Not only physical, not only emotional, not only mentally, Lord, but in our spirit, Lord. You provide every single thing that we need. Lord, I believe you're filling us this morning with comfort. I believe you're filling us this morning with peace. I believe you fill us every day with everything we need, that strength, that healing. Lord, it's accessible because of you and through you. Have your way in us, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' name and every single day, we pray. Amen. Amen. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word, and I pray that I, I might come to know you more, to you guide me in every single step I take, that every day I could be a light unto the world. Say what to say, Lord. What to say, Lord, it's you who give me life, and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now that you saved me, Lord. I give all that I am to you every day I could be a light unto your name. It's every day. Every day, Lord, I, I learn to stand upon your word, and I pray that I, that I might come to know you more, that you would guide me in every single step I take, that every day I could be a light unto the world, every day, it's you I live for, every day, I follow after you, every day. I walk with you, my Lord. See, every day. I Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word, and I pray that I, I might come to know you more. You will guide me in every single step I take that. Every day I can be a light unto the world. Every day it's you I live for. Every
every day I follow after you every day I walk with you my Lord every day it's you I live for Every day, it's you I live for. Every day, I follow after you. Every day, I walk with you, my Lord. My Lord. It's you I live for. It's you I live for every day. 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 It's you I live for every day, my Lord. See, it's you I live for. It's you I live for every day. Come on. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day, my Lord. Every day. It's you I live for every day. I follow after you every day. I walk with you, my Lord. Say one more time, every day. Every day, it's you I live for. Every day, I follow after you. Every day, I walk with you, my Lord, my Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, Just give Lord. them a clap offerings. Yes, Amen. Jesus. at least three times a year you know I, I go to bible study at least a couple times a year and you know and um it's that's that's not what it's about it's not about what you do you're 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 um to god those are like filthy rags it's 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 you when you accept christ in your life that's that's the difference that's the change in your life when he can actually work in your life that's the difference so you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's when your life changes. My life was a mess, just a complete mess. Two divorces. I was living in an apartment five years ago from now. Look what God's done in my life. This, my life has never been this happy, this peaceful ever in 55 years as it is today. And it's because of the God's grace. I didn't deserve any of this. I didn't deserve any of that. And I still cry at times. And I, and I ask, why me? But it's through his grace that he, he did this for me because he loves me. And he loves you. And you don't have to live the way you're living. You don't. You got to trust God with all your heart, not 90%. It's either all or, all, all or nothing. There is no in between. It's either you accept Christ or you don't. You know, Christ was nailed on the cross through his hands and through his feet. Are you going to just sit there and say, no, thanks. He saved your life. He saved you because of what he did. You now can have access to God, our father. He can work in your life. You are now saved from your sins. And, and it's such a powerful thing, you know, when I seen those people stand up, how could you not? Jesus Christ was hung on that cross for you and you're just going to sit there and do nothing. That's, you know, that's, oh, I just can't imagine that. And, and, to, and to know what he's done in my life, it's just incredible. And he continues to do, and I trust him like Pastor Romy, he's told he has cancer, but yet he's smiling 
Why? Because he knows God's going to take care of it. He'll take care of everything. So there's no need for you to run to your friends and say, oh my gosh, I have this problem. I'll, I'll call Mary. She'll know what to do. She's close to God. That's like telling God, sorry, God, you don't get it. Mary does. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. But we do it all the time. I did it. Anytime I had a problem, I would run to my friends, you know, oh my gosh, she's, she left me again. I don't know what's going on. I only cheated on her once. Why, you know, I don't understand the big problem here. And, you know, and it's, and it's, um, and it's sad we do that. We, but we do it all the time. We're so into the world. We, we want to get help from other people and we seek the things of this world. We, we want to run our own show. And it's funny when I hear people say, well, Aaron, if I don't do it, who's going to do it? God's going to do it. Let him be in control. Let him take over. Look what he's done in my life. My gosh, you're sitting in it. You're sitting in my testimony right now. This is what God has done in our lives. My relationship with Esther is so beautiful. I just, I get up every morning and I'm like, is this real? Is this really happening? I didn't know it was supposed to be this good. I didn't know life was supposed to be this peaceful. I didn't know I was going to be this happy. But, but you're missing out on it. If you have worries, if you have fears, if you have anxieties, it's because you don't trust God. You can say what you want. You don't trust God. Because if you did trust God 100%, not 99, 100%, that all goes away. Amen. I have no anxieties. I have no fears. Why? Because I know he will take care of everything. And he does. He does. Why? Because I trust him with everything. And that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. It's so important. And you, and you have to give. You have to give back to God. It's not about keeping things and, and, and showing off your things and everything that you have will go away. Everything that you see here will be gone one day. It all goes away. This, this building means nothing to me. It means nothing. If all you beautiful people weren't in here and, and it was just me sitting here, it'd be empty. But it's for the grace of God, this blessing that he's given us. It's that blessing is what's important. It's for God done for us. And isn't it amazing how Numa Church was leaving a church right the same time we bought this place? Isn't it amazing how God clears your path and he lays things out perfectly for you? Isn't that amazing how that is? And, and that's trust. That's trust, my friends. That's trust. The more you trust him, the more he will work in your life. I see things daily in my life. I'm like, huh. I'm like a baby. I cry all the time. I see him working in my life. I'm like, wow. It's like so obvious. It's right in front of my face. And Esther can witness this. We see people. I, I said, I said, God, please bring us people that you want us to help. Bring them. Bring them here. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to them. We'll do whatever you want, God, all for your glory. We, we've, we've been talking to people in France. We got um, a Jewish man and a Russian wife. Um, we prayed with them. They were um, at, the, at the verge of divorce. After we prayed with them, their marriage is beautiful right now. It's beautiful. The man bought his wife a gift, and, and they said, wow, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's completely turned around. See, that's what God does when, when you allow him and when you trust him and you let him work in your life. It's an amazing life. I just pray for you to, to find it. So if you do have those worries and fears, it's because you don't trust. Until you trust him with everything, those go away and your life will change. So I just pray today over this, over our tithes and offerings that, Father, we just thank you for all that you've done for us, Father. And all the glory goes to you, Father. You always are there. You always take care of us. No matter what, you always are there, Father. You love us with all your heart, more than we'll ever know. And we're just so thankful to have such a wonderful, loving, powerful God as you. We love you, God. We love you. With... Thank you, Jesus. 
See, he knows how much I love him. And what I'm feeling right now is God's love in me. And this is what it does when you have God in your life. It's, it's so much power and it's overpowering for me sometimes that I just, I mean, I could be walking down the hallway and just start crying. I just feel it so strong in my life. And I just want to thank him. And I just love him with all my heart. And I trust him with all my heart, Father. We just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, Lord, thank you for them. Thank you, God, for their, their lives. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them more abundantly. Lord. Lord, I pray for everybody here, God. I pray, Lord, for this time where we dig into your word. Lord, we look at what you have to say about trust and about faith, Lord. We explore, God, what your word says about it, God. I pray that you'd open up our eyes, open up our hearts, Lord. Let us receive directly from you today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's a powerful, powerful testimony. Love it. Every time I hear it, I just get so, I, feel, I get filled up with faith. That's what it is, you know. I love those testimonies because um, what testimonies do is, you know, the, the direct translation of testimony means do it again. If you translate it directly into, uh, uh, into the original language, Hebrew, it means do it again. And what God does for one, he can do for another, Amen. right? But we have to trust him and we have to give our life to him. So we've been exploring a little bit about trust. These past few, uh, past few weeks, we've been in a series of just looking at what, trust in, what trusting in God looks like. And so we've looked at trusting God with our relationships, trusting God in our finances. What does it mean to trust and obey? And today we're going to look into trust and faith. Amen. And more specifically, what the Bible says about trust and what the Bible says about faith. And then how, they, how, how they're similar and how they're different. Right? I think a lot of times we get trust and faith mixed up for the same thing, right? But they're actually different things, and the Bible talks about them very specifically. And so we're going to go through that today. If you have your Bibles, uh, we're going to open up to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. If you don't got it, don't worry. I got your back. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a very common verse. Maybe some of you guys have already uh, know this in your heart or whatever. Let's read it together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Amen. Even the verse by itself, is, it, it just hits me in the right spot, doesn't it? It just hits you. How many of you guys have heard this verse before? Yeah? How many of you guys think you guys know what it means? <laughs> right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We're going to look into this verse a little bit more in depth and more in detail and hopefully enlighten you or uh, maybe you'll learn something that you, that you don't know. If you do know it already, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, let's put this into practice. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? So let's break it down. The first part of the verse says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. What does that mean? What does it look like to trust in the Lord with all your heart? Well, what is your heart? Right? The Bible says, out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speak. All right? So tr if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, it affects your speech. Right? So trust in the Lord with all your heart. And guard your word. Let your words reflect your trust in God. Right? Trust in God's ability to lead us. So I think my animations are a little bit off, but it's all right. Uh, I need a volunteer to help me out with a demonstration of what trust in God looks like. Especially his ability to lead us. So who, can I have a brave volunteer who thinks they're really good at following. <laughs> Anybody want to volunteer? Esther, okay, awesome. Or will you? Do you want to? Okay, all right, Esther, come up on here. All right, 
We're going to test to see if Esther really trusts in God by seeing if she really trusts in me. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We're not doing like a trust ball or anything like that. We're doing something else. Uh, why don't you stand over here for me? Okay. So, oh, actually, it's blocking the projector, so you can kind of just come back here. Yeah, right here is fine. All right. So we're going to see if, God, if um, Esther really trusts me. Now, Esther, do you trust me? Yes. Okay, good. We're going to see how, how, how much you trust me and how far you're willing to trust me. Okay, so all you got to do is follow everything that I say. Okay, Okay. so do whatever I do and follow everything that I do. Okay, okay? so let's, let's test it. Okay. All right, so uh, why don't you just make a silly face? <laughs> all right, why don't you just raise your hand up here? Oh, nice. Well, raise your other hand. Okay, now put them over to the side. All right, awesome. Yeah, she's doing really good, right? Let's see, why don't you put your hands in front of you like this? Okay, great. So Esther's doing a great job. She can trust me with these little things, right? I'm just telling her what to do. It's not too hard and she can trust me with it. Keep your hands open like this. Let's up it up a little bit. Let's see if she really does trust me, okay? So I'm gonna put one cup in your hand. Let's see, uh, right here. So just keep your hands out, put the cup in your hand. You can hold it if you want. Okay, are you right-handed or left-handed? Right -handed. You're right-handed? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing, right? You just got to follow everything that I do. Okay, can you put your cup up? Move to the side. Wow, you're good. Now keep it, keep it out right in front of you. So she can hold this cup, no problem. Let's up it up a little bit. See if she really does trust me. I'm going to take some water here. I'm going to pour a little bit of water in your cup. All right, now why don't you do the same? Put your cup in mine. Awesome. Now give me that. So now we have water in our cup. We're going to raise it up over to the side. Wow, she's doing a good job. She's doing a good job. Let's put it on top of our heads. All right. You can just hold it. You don't have to put it up. Yeah, just hold it. Okay. Okay, um, now let's spin around. Okay, pretty good. Let's, let's do it two times. Spin around two times. Pretty good, all right? Getting a little dizzy. Okay. Now let's close our eyes and spin around. All right, wow, she's doing so good, right? Wow. So now we're just gonna take it up to the, the top notch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lift our cup up and we're gonna turn it up upside down on our head. Can you do that? Are you sure? Okay, so we're just, on the count of three, we're just gonna tip our cup over on top of our head. Are you sure you wanna trust me? Like just flip it up, just flip it upside down. Like, like, just like, like pour it on? Just pour it on your head. Okay. <laughs> now lift it up. All right, everybody give us your hand. Isn't that great? <laughs> so she really trusts me to go all the way, all right? Thank you, Esther, for being an amazing volunteer. So can we really trust God? Can we really trust God no matter what? How far are we willing to trust God? All right. Trusting in God isn't always easy. It's not always easy. Esther demonstrated really well. She knew that there was water in her on the top of her cup, but she still did it anyways. Sometimes it's even harder than that to trust God. Right? I mean, it's crazy the, to the lengths that people will go and trust God. I, I read about this article. It was a while ago. This happened like in the 90s where there's a big shooting that happened at this school, right? And these guys who were just so against God and so offended by the church and so offended by the Christian culture, they went into the school. They went into like the Bible study club, right, with guns, right, big rifles, and they went to this Bible, study, this Bible study in Colorado with these guns, and they asked every Christian, every follower who was in the Bible study to stand up and to get into a line, right? And then one by one, they would ask that, that student, you, are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? Right? How many of you guys have heard this story? And if they said yes, they'd shoot them. So they had all these students lined up, and they were asking them one by one, do you believe in God? This is a true story. This happened in Colorado. Do you believe in God? 
And the person would say, yes. And if they said yes, you would shoot them. Seven people um, who were in the Bible study, they, they, they didn't say that they were believed in God. But he got to this one, this one lady, her name was Cassie. And he asked Cassie, do you believe in God? Are you a Christian? Do you believe in God? And Cassie, 17 years old, said, yes. He shot her and she died. Could you imagine trusting God in that moment to say yes? That's a hard thing to do, right? Somebody with a gun pointed to you. Do you believe in God? What would we do in that situation? Think about it. What would you do in that situation? Would you have confidence to say that, to say yes, you believe in God? Maybe some of you guys are. Maybe some of you guys will. And that's great. Maybe some of you guys aren't. That's fine. But if that were to happen to us today, I believe that there's people in here who would say yes, that they would. Sometimes it's hard to trust in God. You know, I, I struggled with this a lot. People at, co at work would ask me, what are you doing this weekend? What are you doing on Sunday? And I can't even tell them that I'm, I'm going to church. It's a real struggle. Some of us would say, yes, I would die for God. And I would do anything for God if somebody came up to me and pointed a gun at me and asked me if I really love God and if I really believed in God, I would say yes. But we can't tell our coworkers that we have church on Sunday. But we can't tell the person at Walmart that God loves them. We're afraid to give them a card that says God loves you. Isn't it crazy? Can we really trust God with our life? Trust is defined as the uh, belief of re reliability and ability in someone or something. Everybody trusts something, right? The Bible says, you trust in money and down you go. The, the, the person who trusts in high walls invites disaster in their life. But the one who trusts in God, he leads them to prosperity. Isaiah 26 verse 8 says this, Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying your laws. Our heart's desire is to glorify your name. So to trust in the Lord with all your heart, you have a desire to glorify God, to please him. And it leads you to obey. The Bible says his laws are trustworthy. You know, you can only obey somebody that you trust. You know why I listen to my wife? Because I trust her. I trust her opinion. You know why? If she tells me, honey, you need to change your shirt. <laughs> I, would, I would go and change my shirt. Sometimes I would, like, resist. <laughs> but she... But I do it because I trust her. I trust her opinion. The same way she asks me, honey, is this fine? Does this look okay? She asks me that every day. Yes, honey, anything you wear looks fine. Anything that you wear looks great. She trusts my opinion. The same thing I'd go to Pastor Romy. Dito, is this okay to do? Is it okay to do this instead of coming here? He says, yes. I asked him, Dito, is it okay to work on Friday? I'm, I'm not going to be able to come to Bible study. Is it okay? He said, Yes. Maybe you're going to minister to that person, right? I trust his opinion, right? Amen. The same way you guys have people in your life that you trust. You only obey somebody that you trust. So trusting in the Lord, you show your trust in God by obeying in obedience. But like I said, it's not always easy. I'll give you another example. So before I was uh, a worship leader at, at NUMA, I was a missionary, right? I, I traveled to different countries with a team of people and we would do outreaches, usually in like very poor areas, very slum areas, very poverty stricken areas. 
And I remember on one of my first mission trips, I went to uh, Trinidad. And if you don't know where Trinidad is, it's a small Caribbean island, um, like just north of Venezuela. You could actually go to the point, the, the highest point in Trinidad, and you can look and you can see Venezuela, right? It's really close. And it's a very small, small island, All right? There's only one major city. Um, and so when we were going there, and it's very, very, uh, there's not a lot of import or export. Um, so it's very poor, very poor country. So I was there with my friend David, and we were doing this outreach. And we felt like the Lord was leading us to go to the police station, right? That's one of the first things that we always do we, when we do outreach and evangelism. We go to the police station, and we ask them for their permission, right? Because just in case things go down, you know, we want to have their back. We want them to have our backs, right? So on our first day or our second day of, of our ministry outreach, we went to the police station, and we talked with the police officer, and we said, hey, um, is it okay? We're missionaries. Um, we're here to, to just spread the gospel and, and show love. Is it okay if we go to downtown um, Port of Spain, which is the big city, and do some outreach there and do some evangelism? And they're like, sure, yeah, go ahead. Do, do whatever you want. Share the gospel, show love. Just don't go to Central Street. Whatever you do, don't go to Central Street because that's the worst area in part of Spain, and you'll get jumped, and you'll get mugged, and you'll be shot because you're white, and you're American. So me and David was like, oh, okay, <laughs> they're, they're really serious about that, okay, fine, we, we won't go to Central Street, we'll, we'll listen to, we'll, get, we'll, we'll practice in the realm of authority that we have, we'll go to just other streets, other neighboring areas in Port of Spain, right? So on that day, uh, we met we met downtown, we were with a group of other uh, Christians, the church that we were in, and we were teaching them how to do evangelism, right? And so before we, we um, went out to do outreach, we gathered together and we prayed. We are like, Lord, show us who, you're supposed to, who we're supposed to minister to. Show us what they look like. Show us so that we know for sure. Lord, we don't want to just go scattering everything in the, in the dark. We want to be specific. We want to pinpoint the person that is ready to receive. And as we were praying... I felt like the Lord was leading me. This person is going to have a blue hat, a blue cap, and a pink shirt. That's all. When I kept praying, that's all I kept seeing. Blue cap and a pink shirt, and she's going to be sitting on the curb, and, the, and just, there's going to be something wrong with her heart, like a heart condition or something. And I just kept thinking that as, a, as we were praying, right? And so I shared with the group, I feel, like, I feel like I'm supposed to, God wants me to speak to somebody today with a blue cap, uh, a pink shirt sitting on the curb and there's something wrong with her heart or something like that. And the group was like, okay, sure. So we walked around, right? And I think we walked around for maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. You know, we were reaching out to some people, but it wasn't really clicking. Like nothing was really working, right? And so we're like, oh man, we just take a break. Let's go eat lunch. So me and David, we went to eat lunch. We had this fried chicken place. And then after that fried chicken place, when we were sitting in the restaurant, I saw the lady. I saw the, a lady who looked like a blue, who was wearing a blue cap and a pink shirt sitting on the curb outside of the restaurant. So I got up and I was so excited. I was like, David, that's her. That's the one. That's her. So David was like, okay, sure. So then we went outside. We went out and then she started walking. So I was like, no, I got to catch her, right? So we, we probably like walked her down for maybe like a, a block or two, right? And I stopped her and I said, hey, um, hi, um, my name is Mickey. Uh, I'm a missionary. And uh, as I was praying this morning, I felt like God was going to lead me to somebody with a blue hat and a pink shirt um, and um, who had a condition. And she's like, um, do you need, do you have any pain in your body or anything like that? And then she said, yeah, I do. And I said, okay, can you just point to where it is? And she did this, point to her heart. And I got so excited. I was like, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And then I gathered my team. And I'm like, we're going to pray for this lady. We're going to pray for her heart that she'd be healed. And we prayed for her and boom, something happened. She's like, wow, I just felt like a fire in my heart. I just felt like something burning inside of me. Like it was burning away the pain. And said, amen, that's the Holy Spirit. That's God's presence on you. He loves you. Amen. Do you know him? Amen. She said, no. So we let her in a prayer of salvation right there. 
And then it was awesome. We said, okay, we got to go. All right. I got to go. She's like, I got to go. I'm going to be late. And we're like, okay. And I noticed, we looked at the sign, the street sign. Central Street. We were on Central Street. The place where the police were saying, this is the worst area. This is the baddest of the bad. You're going to get jumped and mugged. And here we are. The lady got saved. Wow, sometimes it's hard to trust in the Lord, though. And there are times where the Lord would tell me to do something, and I'd be like, no, Lord, I'm, it's not a good time for me right now. <laughs> I'm in the middle of something. You know, I, I'm going to be late for work. I can't do this. I can't do it right now. How many times have we said no to him because it was an inconvenience for us? How many times have we failed to trust him because of an inconvenience? There's another trip that I went on to, and um, the Lord was telling me to speak to my, my the leader to have him change my name because um, on my, on, I had changed my name on Facebook to, to a different name, right? And then um, uh, it wasn't my real name, but I was just feeling like I should probably just double check with him to make sure he has the right name, right? He, he spelled it right, but then I didn't. And on the day of, on the day that we were supposed to fly to India, we were going to India. My name on the ticket didn't match my name on my passport. Because he got my name from Facebook, which wasn't the real, my real name. Right? It wasn't the correct spelling of my name. I ended up missing out on that. Right? How many times, and the Lord, I just felt so convicted. Oh, he told, the Lord had told me to check with him, to double check with him. And I was like, no, nah, Lord, I think, he, I think it's okay. We, he got this. It's inconvenient for me to contact him. Right? How many times have we missed out on something because we didn't obey the, the word of God, the voice of God? Right? John chapter 2, verse 23 says this, because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration, where he turned water into wine, his first miracle, people began to trust him, right? Because of a miracle, people began to trust him, right? But Jesus didn't trust him because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. God knows our heart. He knows how far we're, we're willing to trust him. Right? Share another quick testimony with you. Sometimes God, you guys ever hear the saying, like, God is always on time. God is always, he's never late. He's always on time. It's true. God is always on time. But to us, didn't it seem sometimes like God is late sometimes? For us, doesn't God knows the limits of our trust? Right? But sometimes it feels like God is late. You don't believe me? Ask Lazarus. Ask Lazarus if he thinks that God was on time. He was dead three days. He had already died. He was sick, and Jesus knew he was sick, and Jesus didn't come, and he died. He's probably thinking, ah, God is late. I remember a testimony that Pastor Romy shared. I love his testimony where he's going on a mission trip to Japan and he's saying, yes, I'm going to go. And they're asking him, where's the payment? He's like, yes, I'm going to go. I'm going to get it to you. I'm going to get the payment. And then he, they, I'm paraphrasing, but they're like, um, if you're still going to go on the mission trip, raise your hand. And Pastor Romy raised his hand, even though he didn't have any money, right? And then on the day that they were collecting it, he went to the ATM and checked his balance. And, he, and it wasn't there. And then he checked it again. And then all of a sudden, all the funds came into his ATM. And he was like, oh, <laughs> he checked it again, right? God knows the day of. God knows how far we can trust him, right? I'll give you another testimony. Just happened recently. 
So my wife is, um, she was working at 3M, um, and she has an employment authorization card, right? And uh, before it was set to expire, 3M was calling her, and they were saying, hey, where's, um, you know, your employment authorization is going to end. You need to renew it or show us some other form that you can work legally. And then at that time, we hadn't had her uh, renewal, her green card yet, right? And so we started to to pray and every day they would call, hey, do you have the documentation? Hey, do you have the documentation? And we're like, no, we don't have it yet. We have an appointment. No, we don't have it yet. We're, you know, and we went in for the appointment, right? We did all that. And the guy at the, uh, at the office said, it's gonna take two weeks, two to three weeks for you to receive your card. And we're like, oh man, that's cutting it really close. So we went and we calculate, we checked, we not counted all the days that we'd have until we came and it, it ended up being like, oh, it's going to be too late. We're not going to get it in time. Right. And so we started praying we're like, okay, Lord, uh, we pray and we trust you. And, you know, and I'm not going to lie. There was some, there was some anxiety. There was some like, oh my gosh, if we don't get this in time, she's going to lose her contract. She's going to lose her, her job. She's not going to be able to work. Right. And we're trying to talk with the lady like, okay, you know, if there's something else that we can do, blah, 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 we can, can we provide a letter or something? And she was like, no, we need the actual card, right? So we kept praying and the, after, every day we'd go and check the mail. We'd see if we get it and it, it, it wouldn't come, right? Well, guess what? It ended up being like a day or two before it was due, it came. <laughs> is that, am I the only one that that happens? Like sometimes it feels like God is late. God, if you just only, uh, I bet Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were like, if <laughs> God, you could have came before we were thrown in the fire. <laughs> you could have, the angel, the angel could have shown up before we were thrown into the furnace. <laughs> right? Abraham was probably thinking, Lord, you, you, you could have told me before I packed all this stuff. Before I tied my son to the to the t- to the offering, right? <laughs> Jonah's probably thinking, Lord, you could have you could have showed up before I got swallowed, before the the, the fish or the the creature swallowed me and <laughs> spent three days in the in the. <laughs> my point is, why does God do that? Why does God do that? You know why? He's strengthening us. He's training us to trust him more and more and more. Do you know that if you trust God, if God delivers you in bigger situations for these little situations, it'd be so easy. It's, it's going to be so easy to trust him. Lord. Right? It's like when you train for uh, a marathon. Do you know that if, uh, if you train for a 5K, you, to train for a 5K, you have to run a 10K. <laughs> to train for uh, a marathon, think of how many marathons you have to run to train for that. I'm teaching my wife how to drive, and I'm telling her what's going to be on the test. And while we're driving, she's doing, like, really hard stuff. And I'm asking her, why are you doing, like, super hard stuff? That's not going to be on the test. And she's like, I know it's not going to be on the test. I'm challenging myself, making it harder for myself. So that way on the day of the actual test, it's going to be easy. And sometimes that's how God is with us. He trains us to trust him. He trained, if we can learn to trust him with something so big, like a, a disease, a cancer. I love what Pastor Romy shared today. He did it before. Now he's smiling. He did it for me before in 2013. He told me to get up and let me do it. And now look at him, smiling, preaching, still sharing the word. How many people, if they heard the news that he heard, would be in despair, would be disappointed? How many people have they heard that they have cancer, and it's, it's far along, would be worried. Not Pastor Romy. God's already done it for him. Now he has full and complete trust over it from him. 
Oh, do not turn against God when you're in a, a, a tough situation. Do not turn against him when it seems like there's no way out. Don't you know he's building you and training you and molding you to trust him? So that way when something, other things come down the road, <laughs> you're just joy, you're full of joy, knowing you're excited actually. Lord, I'm so excited how you're going to bless me and do this testimony for me. It's going to be so powerful. And I'm going to get to share it with other people. Amen. I love what Brother Aaron shared, right? Five years ago, I was living in an apartment, right? Then he chose to trust God with his business. And look, look now where we are now, right? Amen. You know what? I, I, I bet you that anything that comes his way, he's going to be like, God already delivered me before. These things are going to be easy. Amen. <laughs> God trains us to trust him. He always provides. And he's always on time. He's just a little bit, you know, he's like, he, he knows the limits of our trust. And sometimes he likes to stretch it so we can build trust. It's like when you work out a muscle, right? If you're just lifting 20 pounds and you lift 20 pounds for a month, eventually that 20 pounds is, is going to be so light, right? You got to keep increasing little by little, making increments, right? So that way you can build. Same thing with us. God trains us, builds our trust, right? He does the same thing with his disciples. Let's read Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 38. It says this, as evening came, I got to check the time here, okay? Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. And Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on the cushion. And the disciples woke him up, shouting, shouting. Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? What do you think was going on in the minds of Jesus' disciples? Fear. Well, yeah, probably a lot of fear, lot of fear. right? Yeah. Could you imagine at that time what it was like to go through that? Just break it down a little bit. It was evening. The sun was going down. The sun was going down. They were tired. I bet the disciples were tired because they were just ministering to people. Jesus was getting on the boat to get away. Let's cross to the other side of the lake. You know, back in they didn't have motorboats. <laughs> it wasn't as easy. To, it wasn't easy to cross a lake. It was tough. You had to roll. <laughs> These disciples are probably thinking, "Oh my gosh!" Like. We just got done feeding all these people, and now we're going to get in the boat, and we're going to cross the lake, and it's going to be dark soon. Where are we going to sleep? We're going to get to the other side. It's going to be nighttime. Where are we going to sleep? But they're like, okay, all right, let's just, we trust you, Jesus. We'll, we'll do this. <laughs> other crowds started falling behind them. What are we going to do when we get to the other side, and all these people are still following us, right? I bet... I bet this, I know if you guys have ever studied the weather, right? Storms, they don't, it doesn't just storm all of a sudden. There's, there's a buildup to a storm, right? They probably saw the clouds as they're getting ready. They're like, uh, I think it looks like it's might going to rain, right? Peter was a fisherman. He knows all about weather. He watches the weather before he goes out and fishes. He was probably thinking to, thinking to himself, it looks like it's going to rain. If it were me, and I'm a fisherman, I'm a boating expert, I wouldn't go out, right? Maybe some thoughts that were going on in his head as they were going out. But okay, we'll trust you, Jesus. We'll, we'll, we'll go. And then a fierce storm came, and high waves were breaking into the boat. 
You ever been rocked by a boat before? You ever been in a boat with, uh, that was going at a high speed and, and, and it was rocking? Or been, have there ever been like, you know, when, when wakes, you know, waves when you're riding the boat? It, it tosses you, right? It makes you dizzy, right? It makes you hold on, like, like I'm holding on. And then the waves, they get pretty big. This is how you know it's a big lake because lakes, big waves, the waves don't get that big in small lakes, right? And the waves start crashing in and filling the boat with water. And now the disciples are like, what is Jesus doing? What is he doing? Why are we out here? Why are we leaving the crowd? Why are we in the middle of, uh, uh, in the, middle of the lake when the storm is coming? What's going on? And on top of that, Jesus is sleeping. <laughs> right? Jesus was putting their trust to the test. How, how far are you willing to trust me? And then they woke him up as soon as the waves started coming and, and filling the boat with water. What are you doing? Help us. And what does Jesus say? You have so little faith. You have no faith, actually. That's what the Bible says. You have no faith. Right? So what's the difference between trust and faith? You can trust somebody. You can trust them, but maybe when it comes down to it, you have no faith in them. Right? I'll tell you what it is, uh, because I'm running short on time. I'll I'll just kind of jump around a little bit. Trust is relational. And faith is situational. I trust my wife. I trust Pastor Romy. I trust Aaron. I trust the elders because I know them. I have a relationship. I've built a relationship with them enough where I can trust them, right? I've built a relationship with my wife enough to know that I can trust her. She's a good character. She has great character, right? But do I have faith? Do I have faith in them? If there was a big storm in my life, I was something happened to me and I was in the hospital. Do I have faith that they would take care of me? Right? Yes, I would. I would because I know them. I trust them. We can trust God, but do we really have faith in him? We know God is a good character. His, he's a good God. He has, and he, he's, he's a, a, a God who loves to bless and God loves to give, right? But God, we trust that God has the, all the riches in heaven. But how come when we're, our bills are stacking up, where it's our faith? We know that God has storehouses of, and streets paid of, paid of the gold in heaven, right? We have no faith in him when the bills come. Build your faith in the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding, all right? I'm going to go through all this, right? Leaning on the Lord is not anti-intellect just because i say that i i i lean on the lord leaning is like this so for, this is a podium right i'm leaning on it right i'm leaning on this right if you remove this podium i would fall right i'm, I'm holding on to this for stability the bible says do not lean on your own understanding it means don't lean on what you know i'm not saying don't seek knowledge I'm not saying that science is bad, but don't lean on it. The more that you know, the more you should wonder. The more that I know, the more I should, I should have things that I wonder about. There are things that I wonder about. There are things that I don't know. And I love the things that I don't know because it, it, uh, it provokes me to lean and trust in the Lord. Big situation with my family happening, right? And there are some things that I just don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know why God did, allows these things to happen. And it's okay. It's not my job to know. It's not my responsibility to know. I have to trust. My responsibility is to trust and lean not on my understanding, Amen. right? Maybe some of these things will be revealed later on. Maybe a few years down the line, I will know what happened, why, why God allowed that, or why God is moving in that way, right? So the more that you do know about God, 
you should also have, the more things you should wonder about God. So that way you would lean, the more you lean on him. Oh, I hope that's, I hope that's making sense. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> I hope that's making sense, right? The Bible says, if you claim to know everything, do not trust anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know anything, right? All right, so... Um, kind of running a little bit short on time, but it's okay. So yeah, it's amazing what God does with our trust and our faith, right? So there are four different levels of faith that are mentioned in the Bible, right? The first one we read about in Mark chapter 39, why are you afraid? Do you have no faith, right? The next one is this, little faith. Three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward walking on the water. This is when Peter was walking in water. The disciples saw him walking on the water, and they were terrified. In fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called out to the Lord, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come. So Peter went over to the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. And when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Lord, save me, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, grabbed him. You have so little faith. Why do you doubt me? Then they climbed in the boat and the wind stopped, right? The next mention of faith is this, Matthew chapter 8, verse 18. Jesus was saying this, as a leader of synagogue came and knelt before him, my daughter has died, he said. But you can bring her back to life if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up to him and said, he touched, she touched the fringe of his robe. For she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around. He saw her and said, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment, right? And the last measure of faith that's mentioned in the Bible is when Jesus says, you have great faith. Great is your faith. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a, a, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority with soldiers under me. Tell this one, go, and he does, and come, and he said, and he comes. I said to him, do this, and he does that. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. So there are four instances when Jesus calls out people's faith. The first instance with the disciples on the, in the waves, you have no faith. The second with Peter, when Peter begins to walk on the water, he sees the storms and says, you have, you have little faith. The third with the woman who just says, if I can only touch him, if I can only grab him, my daughter will be healed. She has faith. And the last one, great faith. This is the one we want to go for. Lord, just say the word. I don't have to touch you. I don't have to be, I, you, all you have to do is say it and I'll be healed. I won't go too much into depth. I feel like this is another message, but have, having faith in God, when you're, our faith is so strong in the Lord, we trust him with anything, right? Trust is relational and faith is situational. If you don't remember anything from this message, remember that. Trust is relational. Faith is situational. Trust. I trust God because I know him to be a good God, to be the God of our, our he, to have riches in heaven. I trust that his word, in his word, his word says he has riches in heaven. I have faith in God that no matter what debt I'm in, no matter how many bills that need to be paid, he will provide. 
right? I trust that he's the protector. I know his character as the protector. He protects his sheep. He protects his little one. I know that no matter, I have faith no matter where I go, even if it's on Central Street in Trinidad and Tobago, he's going to be with me. He's going to be protecting me, right? I trust that God is the God who saves that's in his, that's his nature. He's the God of salvation. I know that no matter how, I have faith that no matter what situation I'm in, God save me. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you would minister to your people today. Everybody listening here in this room, over Zoom, over Facebook, on YouTube, speak to them more. Bring them more revelation about these scriptures, about this message today. Show them, Lord, what's on your heart for them. Lord, lead us to trust you. Lead us to have faith in you. God, thank you, God, for everything you're doing in our life. Lord, we bless you. We love you. Let us love. Let us have faith and obey and trust you in return. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So powerful right there that we just heard from the word of God. But one thing that is stuck in my heart is this. How many of you know the word of God here? This is the Holy Bible. This is the promises of God right here. This is what God is saying. If you trust this word, that is what we call great faith you know like that man that's saying you know just say it God just say it and here he said it God tells you I am your God that I can provide I am Jehovah Jireh God said I am your healer I am Jehovah Rapha. God said, I am Jehovah Nisi, your banner, your victory. This is the word of God. This is what we need to trust. The promise of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For a uh, Wonderful word, Lord. That's what you said in, in Mark 9, chapter 23. What do you mean if I can? If you believe, nothing is impossible. I mean, of you today, that you believe in God, that you have faith in God, then trust him because to him, nothing is impossible. And that is the word says to him, for him, nothing is difficult. Nothing is impossible. He can do it. He is able. Amen? Amen. Let's stand. Receive the blessing of God. The God that can heal. The God that can weigh, uh, can, can do all things that is impossible. Can do all miracles. That God that is able that we believe. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he, li may he lift his, up, his countenance upon you and give you peace. That you may walk in truth and his word, trusting him fully, 100%. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning us. Thank you for joining us via Zoom and live on Facebook. We love to have you. We love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, please contact us or email us on our email and visit us on, on our website, www.numachurchmn.com. Thank you so much. We love you all. God bless you. Amen.